Open world sandboxes enable so many different things that, well, have nothing really to do with the game narrative or any of that. And that leads us to trying some stuff. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks 10 Big Brain Open World Game Experiments, we try for no reason. Starting off with number 10, it's Elden Ring's Lightning Goats vs. Bosses. Bosses in Elden Ring can be extremely difficult, but have you ever wondered how well they do against the humble Lightning Goat? If you're unaware of what a Lightning Goat is, it's a, a goat with a little bit more lightning. Why them? Well, why not? They're just as good as anything. I I'm mostly curious just because how ridiculous they look. Their standard attack of uh, rolling into you isn't particularly impressive, but the lightning damage they do is serious stuff. And that's just the thing that might give them an edge in the fight. So when I got to work trying to set up this totally legitimate experiment, I ran into some roadblocks. I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit here, folks, because you've probably seen a lot of bosses fighting each other in videos on YouTube. But if you're like me, you didn't know how they made those. Well, this is how you do it. It's a little thing called Cheat Engine. I I'll throw out a big blanket. Don't try this at home disclaimer here. Cheat Engine stuff can be pretty sketchy, even at the best of times but it's basically the only way. There's a Battle Royale mod you can find. It's decent, but it can be very confusing at first. The first time I managed to get some lightning goats to fight Margaret, I'd assume he'd get totally destroyed, but it was actually the other way around. And Margaret wiped the floor at them handily, but that's because I gave them a handicap. With the limiters removed, the goats proceeded to destroy Margaret in, in seconds. Warrior blood must truly run in thy veins. Tarnished. Same thing happened to the boss at the Stormvale Castle, Godric the Grafted. Even just a few goats were sometimes more than many bosses could handle. Even one of the last bosses in the game, Godfrey, fell to the unstoppable might of the lightning goats, which is a very silly sentence. Melania, yeah, another story though. They could barely touch her, which I assume would be the case. But it was disappointing to see. I kind of wanted to end the experiment with a win for the goats. So here's them just tearing through the battlements in the front of the academy. These goats have no mercy. And all these regular enemies it just do not stand a chance against their power. They're basically just a golden wave of destruction that cannot be stopped. All of it's pointless, of course, but sometimes you just want to see what happens. At number 9, using a floating platform to rocket through the sky in Tears of the Kingdom, like Breath of the Wild, Tears has some absolutely ridiculous glitches, and this one's probably my favorite so far. Sure, you can experiment with something boring and functional, but screw that, let's get to the glitches. So trying to explain glitches, any glitches in any game, basically makes you sound like a crazy person, but they're particularly elaborate in Tears of the Kingdom, so be warned and try to follow along here. So the prerequisite to get this work, uh, you can't have talked to this guy and this Goron at Riverside Stable. If you've talked to them, the trick will not work, which makes total sense, right? Uh, with that said, what you have to do here is find these two guys, then wedge a hoverstone between them like this. Now you jump on top, talk to the Goron while you're standing on it. There's a short cutscene after the dialogue finishes, and it makes the stone move somewhere else. So you just use Ultra Hand on it, and if it doesn't move, that means it worked. So now you fuse a piece of star fragment to the floating platform. We're just about done. Uh, all that's left now is to grab the star stone and start flying. If everything was done correctly, Link gets propelled through the air at ludicrous speeds. <laughs> And you can even kind of control where the platform goes if you try to move the star fragment around. Sometimes it kind of awkwardly stops mid-flight, but for the most part it just works. At least until you slam into the side of a sky island. Um, that usually ends the fun. Uh, but who knows how long this glitch is going to last. Uh, but at least right now it's relatively easy to pull off and extremely entertaining. 
And number eight is shooting flares at umbrellas in GTA 5. Not quite as impressive as being able to cross the entire map in seconds, but there's a bizarre charm around this simple trick in Grand Theft Auto 5. Some of the earliest physics tricks are still in the game. For example, this one. Uh, with just a flare and some umbrellas, it's possible to send whatever character you're controlling into the air. Going into it, I wasn't really sure if this was still possible, but it is still in the game. Still works, which is useful for making a video like this. What you have to do for this trick is get a flare gun, obviously, uh, but then you drive down to Los Santos Pier and dive into these specific table umbrellas. They're normally static, but if you drive into them, they become physics objects. Now the trick here is they need to be on their backs with the pole part of the umbrella sticking out. That's the hardest part. You gotta hit them at the right angle to get them to flip properly. But once they are set up correctly, all you have to do is stand on the edge of the umbrella and then shoot the tip of the stand with a flare gun. Play your cards right and you're gonna get flung into the air. It's actually one of the oldest tricks in the game, but somehow still works. This is the kind of stuff that they've patched out in previous games. Uh, so it's great that they didn't. It's not ridiculous air here or anything, but it is impressive how much force you're somehow able to get with, you know, an umbrella and a flare gun. And number seven, making gravity your very own plaything in RDR2. Uh, the thing about experiments is they don't always work. Originally, this was going to be about what you can do with the bullet catcher in the San Dennis stage show, but you know what? That's boring, so instead, let's break the game wide open and push the physics engine to the breaking point. With the Rampage Trainer installed, you can do some pretty amazing stuff, like use a makeshift gravity gun to throw carts and horses around like playthings. <laughs> Very entertaining, but I really wanted to see how far it can go. So let's just get straight to the black holes. Uh, yeah, this one is one of the powers available in the Rampage Trainer. With the press of a button, you can generate a black hole in the sky directly above your head and suck up everything that can actually be affected by physics. Uh, my favorite part is how nonchalant everyone is about getting sucked up into a death hole in the sky. Everyone's just walking around like, no big deal. Uh, you know, cowboys walking around like, sometimes you just get sucked up into the air to your certain death. Never know what's going to happen in the old west. <laughs> The fact it doesn't cause the game to immediately crash shows how good Rockstar are at making open worlds. So many other games would just be chugging along with this kind of a mod installed, but RDR2 just holds steady. And all that goes up must eventually come down, and that is that is the best part. Literally everything that gets sucked up falls down in a human waterfall of destruction. Truly a sight to behold, and one of the most bizarre but fascinating things I've ever seen in a game. Hard to look away, all this debris and death just raining down from the sky. Chef's kiss. Mwah. It's, it's sad they don't have an animation of me doing that. The people want a Falcon Chef Kiss animation. Actually, there's no indication that people want that. Nobody's ever said that to me. <laughs> And number six, ruining a cutscene in Red Dead Redemption 2. In that liminal space between gameplay and cutscenes, weird stuff can happen. Most games put a hard line between the gameplay parts and the cutscene parts. The line's a lot blurry in Red Dead 2, though, which gives us room to experiment. It's completely pointless, just like everything else on this list, but had to do it. Why wouldn't I? This is a Falcon list, okay? This is a list for me. I wanted to see all this stuff firsthand. So we did it. I am clearly mad with power. So anyway, here's a perfect example of a cutscene to ruin. The Spines of America, an early mission in Chapter 2 where you meet up at Emerald Ranch. What makes it so exploitable is the wind-up. These characters are just sitting there out in the open in a place where you're free to take out your weapons and it doesn't start immediately when you approach. It actually leaves you in control of your character for a second or two while the cutscene starts, which is all you need to start some trouble. The goal here is simple. Throw a stick of TNT on the ground so that it explodes right before the cutscene starts. I mean, it sounds simple anyway. It's a little trickier than it looks. Uh, 
to consistently pull it off requires some pretty precise timing. Uh, most important part's very simple though. Be sure to take out the dynamite far away from them and don't target them with it. Otherwise, they'll run away and the cutscene will not start. It took me a few tries, but eventually I managed to tag this guy with some explosives before the cutscene starts and <laughs> man, it is not good. <laughs> you okay there, buddy? Likes. Liking ain't the problem. Trusting is, as I said. Keep your voices down. It's stuff like this that always makes in-game cinematics superior to pre-rendered. Uh, it is the only way to ever see something this ridiculous. Both these guys just heal over dead immediately once the cutscene ends and you automatically fail the mission so it's pointless uh but it's worth it you can't tell me this isn't worth it you're still watching this video we're like eight nine minutes in at this point you know how worth it this is and number five stopping the train in gta 5 so anyway started off simple enough with a bunch of cars blocking the tunnel they were no match for the power of the train of course, in real life, a regular car, a single one, could theoretically derail a train. I mean, a, a, a well-placed rock probably could. But here you can row them up by the dozens and uh, it doesn't do anything. So I upgraded to trucks. Maybe that would be enough. Uh, no. By the way, it's pretty spectacular watching everything that stands in the train's way. Just go flying the second it comes into contact with them. But something's got to be able to stop the train, right? So I switched out all this junk for the real deal. About a billion dollars worth of next generation tanks that got to weigh multiple tons each. They look solid enough and have completely blocked off the tunnel. So there's nowhere for it to go. If anything's stopping the train, it's going to be this stuff. And it doesn't. And I'm not surprised. It seems like the train isn't really operating on any sort of physics, uh, but it's still just ridiculous how impervious trains actually are. You can't hurt them. No matter how much junk you put in their way or how many rockets you fire, nothing does anything to them. I don't know why Rockstar made the train so tough, but it is really amazing and enjoyable to watch it smash through literally everything you put in front of it. Yeah, the people are probably disappointed. Remember I said they wanted this. I'm sorry, the people, we weren't able to do this one. <laughs> And number four is dropping a legendary bull gator into the camp in RDR2. Another experiment gone awry for a simple reason. The legendary bull gator sure looks intimidating and in its natural habitat can be extremely dangerous. But if you manage to bring one all the way over to the gang's camp, you know, using a trainer, I'm not completely nuts, but it just doesn't do anything. Unless you break all the scripts and change everything about how the game naturally behaves, but the gator just wanders around for a little bit and nobody really reacts. Even dropping a bunch of these things into San Dennis doesn't manage to generate a lot of chaos, and that's extremely disappointing. Basically, the same thing happens as in the camp. The croc appears, seems confused, and tries to leave. I'm probably gonna irritate somebody for using both the words croc and gator to describe one thing. Well, let me ward you off right now. I don't care. That being said, you know the one animal that seems not afraid to attack everything it sees? The grizzly bear. So instead of bull gators, I switched tactics to using the grizzlies and that worked a lot better. I started by bringing a whole row of these creatures into San Dennis and they wreaked holy havoc. This is what I wanted to see with the bull gators, total hysteria. So again, I don't I don't wanna pay the gators any kind of respect and tell, call them the right thing every time. It's gator, it's croc, I don't care. They've disappointed me. The grizzlies are just a lot better, not timid at all. Like the crocs slash gators slash whatever. They just start biting whatever is close. It's not quite as funny as seeing Bill Williamson get chewed on by a giant gator, but it's definitely more spectacular. And number three, fun with shallow water in GTA 5. Oddly enough, GTA 5 seems to be one we are able to get stuff out of. Um, one of the dumb things you kind of notice while screwing around in this game, though, sometimes the ways weapons affect parts of the environment can be strange. Still interesting, though, like how rocket launchers work in water. When a rocket hits the water, it just stops and starts sinking, which you would think makes it worthless and harmless, but uh, no. So you, I got into some waste high water with a rocket get to see what happens when you fire a rocket in point blank range in shallow water it stops when it hits the surface but the rocket remains intact you might think you're safe but the rocket's still dropping and while it doesn't have any rocket propulsion it can still explode if it hits the sand which kills you instantly
Another fun thing to uh, screw around with in shallow water is C4. This little trick only works with ocean water, which, eh, going to a lake doesn't have the same water effect. Whatever. Anyway, you throw C4 into the water and detonate it, and it makes a little hill in the water. From playing around with it, I found that 15 or so explosives will go off in a row if you plant them, which is more than enough for this weird little thing. Just throw down a whole bunch of C4 in the same spot, detonate it, and watch the magic happen. It's like a little school volcano, the way C4 detonates in sequence, which means that you can just keep going and going and going until the limit on explosions is reached. Doesn't have to be all in the same place either. You can easily throw the C4 in a line or something and make a little cascade effect. Pointless, but a lot of fun to screw around with. And number two is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom building a spinning death machine. There is some absolutely absurd stuff that can be built in Tears of the Kingdom, and while it's mostly unnecessary to complete the game, one of the most fun things to do in the game is just mess around with Ultra Hand and see what kinds of over-the-top nonsense you can put together. One build I really wanted to experiment with was this absolutely insane spinning death machine, which uses a few normally inaccessible parts to build. Uh, it's got multiple elemental emitters, spikes, and an engine that's only found in a shrine to make, so even getting it to work requires some pretty big brain energy. The trick to getting parts out of the shrines is that you have to fuse them with a weapon. Normally, when you remove something from a fusion, that part breaks, but if you take it to a gun in Terrytown, it will separate the two parts for free. The motor comes from the Geminic Shrine. And while well, I got the spikes from the Rasatakiwa Shrine, yeah, they got weird names. What can I say? Uh, with those two parts available, you can build this beastie machine, which doesn't even need a stabilizer to stay upright. The constant spinning is enough to keep this thing standing, uh, and it's surprisingly sturdy for what it is. Of course, if that's too much work, just strap a bunch of emitters to a tire and call it a day. Works nearly the same. You could literally spend the entire day talking builds from Tears of the Kingdom, but let's wrap it up. And number one, donating way too much money to the camp in RDR2, obviously. You know, Dutch is constantly getting on your case about money, how they need so much, how you're not contributing, blah, blah, blah. So I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to give Dutch all the money he could ever want. And I really went overboard with this one. I uh, wanted to see if it was possible to get Dutch to say something appreciative to Arthur for all his hard work. So I dumped 50,000 bucks into the camp's bank. And you know what happened? Yeah, nothing. Maybe you did know that was going to happen, but it was nothing. Not a single word of thanks from Dutch. Hey, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 takes place in 1899, and the U.S. inflation calculator only goes back to 1913. But 50 grand in 1913 is about $1.5 million in today's money. I promise none of the other outlaws are doing numbers like that. So you know what? I just spawned Dutch in the game outside the camp with all the NPC protections turned off and just killed him. Like, not even a word of thanks, sir. And for some reason, killing Dutch causes the game screen to fade out and for Arthur to appear resting at the camp like I just completed a mission. Don't know what that was about or really what any of this was about. Just a bunch of stuff I tried out for no reason here. What more do you want? And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.